Welcome to the second lecture of 2FH3. We'll discuss in this lecture um, a number of uh, important products. We'll see them very often electromagnetics, scalar, the scalar triple product, the vector triple product. And uh, we'll also move to discuss um, the cylindrical coordinate systems. We'll discuss how to make transformation from the, uh, between the coordinates and transformation of unit vectors. Um, this lecture will cover uh, lecture chapter 1, pages 15 to 25, and chapter 2, pages 29 to 33. We discussed in previous lectures um, the, the, scalar, the scalar product and the vector product. Um, there is another type of product which involves three vectors, uh, A, B, and C. is called the uh, triple scalar product. And as the name implies, it gives a scalar, it gives a number. So what's happening here, um, as you can see in, the, in this expression here, the underlined one, um, we we dot we cross product the two vectors two of these vectors and then the resulting vector resultant vector is dot product with with, with the third one and because this, the vector product uh, it's it's one of its meanings is the area of the barrel of the um, of the barrel pipe the, the bladder barrel pipe um, uh, surrounded by the two vectors then when you take the dot product with the third vector this gives you actually a volume. This gives you the volume of the parallelogram whose edges are the three vectors. So this is really the meaning of this one. So it is first you do a cross product, and after you do a cross product, you do a dot product. And uh, you, you, this expression can be done in three different ways using this uh, cyclic um, expression shown here. The order does matter. So a dot b cross c, or you take you take b dot c cross a or c dot a cross b it's going actually in a cycle um, and uh, we, this will give you a number and this number is really the volume of this parallelogram a more concise way of calculating the treble scalar product is to calculate the determinant shown here so this determinant requires you to uh, put the first vector in the first row second vector in the second row and third vector in the third row and then you do you calculate the determinant of these three vectors and it has this expansion why this exactly equivalent to the other one it's very simple because if you try to get the the cross product between b and c this would be equal to um, ax ay and az and then you put the b components in the second row bx by bz and then uh, CX, CY, and CZ. If you expand that, you get exactly that same expression we have here, uh, but the, 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 the capital AX component and AY component and AZ component will be replaced by the unit vectors AX, AY, and AZ. So indeed, this determinant expression is equivalent to first taking the cross product between B and C, and then after that you take the dot product with A. But a shortcut of doing this is to simply to calculate the determinant where every vector is, is, is put in a row. As an example on the triple scalar product, we'll take a look at this uh, example here. Uh, we would like we have a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is, is used very often in computational electromagnetics, especially in the finite element method. They divide the space into a number of uh, small, if it's 2D, in this tiny tri triangles. If it's 3D, it's tiny pyramid shaped tetrahedrons. Uh, they call it tetrahedra. Actually, it's, it, is, it is a plural of it is tetrahedra. So uh, we have, we say that the tetrahedron is formed by three edge vectors as shown in the figure here. So you can see there is vector A, this is the first vector, there is, vec there is vector A, there is vector B, and there is vector C. And uh, this is the origin here, so this is our origin, this is the zero here. And um, the, 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 this, this uh, four, it's actually it has now four faces, this, this shape here, it's a, vo it's a volumetric, the 3D shape, it has four faces. And we would like to know the volume of the, this of this tetrahedron if A is equal to 2AX plus 3AZ, B is equal to 6AY plus 6AY plus 2AZ, and if C is equal to 3AX plus 3AY. This example is actually a very simple one, and the basic idea here is the tetrahedron has a volume of one-sixth of that of the corresponding barrel pipe. 
in which each one of these vectors is an edge. So this is really the basic thing. What, what remains is a very direct, very straightforward calculation. So we can get the, uh, the volume of the barrel pipe. The volume of the barrel pipe is a treble scalar product, which is obtained by, by, by this determinant here. So uh, every vector will be in a row. So I, uh, we put A in the first row, B in the second row, C in the third row. We expand this uh, determinant. And uh, once we get this number, we take one sixth of that. And this will be the volume of the tetrahedron. So if you expand the determinant, you get this number here, 2, 6 multiplied by 0 minus 2 by 3 plus 3 multiplied by minus 18. Um, so if you sum this, you get an answer which is minus 66. What does it mean to have a volume of minus 66? A volume must be positive. So where did this negative sign come from? It's very simple. What we calculated was actually A dot B cross C. We first did the cross product between B and C, and then dot A. So if this vector and this vector have an angle which is greater than 90, then it's it's clear that the scalar dot product will be negative because the, uh, it is equal. The scalar dot product by definition is the modulus of the first vector by the modulus of the second vector of cosine theta. So this is saying simply that the angle is negative, but the volume is positive. So the volume here is actually equal to 66. But we know that the angle between them is between 90 and 180, the smallest angle between um, A and the vector B cross C is between 90 and 180. This is the smallest angle. So, so the sign should it scare us. We know this is fine. It simply indicates that the angle is greater than 90. If you want to get the volume of the tetrahedron, which I denoted here by V subscript T, it is a volume of the parallelogram uh, divided by 6, so it's equal to 11 meter cubed. And as I said earlier, if I don't give you the units, you should consider the units to be in meters. So the volume, because it's a product of three length, it's equal, it has units of meter cubed. A second type of product between three vectors that appears from time to time in electromagnetic derivation is a vector triple product. And as the name implies, it, impl it, it uses three vectors and its result is a vector. And the vector triple product, as shown here in this formula, you do a cross product between B and C first, and then the result, you, you cross product it with A. And this, this, uh, this cross product has a property that it gives you a vector in the in the plane of B and C, what does this mean? Um, if you if you have two vectors here B and C, so I'm draw, trying to draw them here. If you have B and C, if you do a cross product between them, you get a vector normal to their plane. So I'll call this vector here D. Now, if there is another vector A somewhere in space, and you cross product A and D, you must get a vector normal to the plane of A and D. And this vector, because it's normal to D, which is normal to B and C, it must be parallel to the plane of B and C. So if, if B and C are in one plane here, you can simply draw a plane here, then this result that we are going to get at the end must be parallel to B and C. So it can be expanded as a summation of the B and C vectors. So th this is a very interesting identity. We don't have to worry about the derivation of that. So... You can do the triple cross product in two ways. Either you cross product B and C first, as shown here, okay, and then you cross product the result with A, or calculate A dot C, the, 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 scalar, pro, the scalar product between A and C, the scale product between A and B, and then multiply A dot C with B. A dot C is a number, it's a scalar. You multiply by the vector B, multiply A dot B, which is a number, by the vector C, and then you subtract them. And this will give you the answer. Uh, and again, to, to imagine what is happening, you should remember that A cross B cross C gives you a vector parallel to the plane in which B and C, uh, in which B, the vectors B and C lies. lies. So this means that it, it should, it, we should be able to expand it in terms of B and C. Now, there are a couple of identities here shown. Uh, the first one is this one here. Uh, A, B dot C is not equal to A dot B, C. Why is that? B dot C is a number, so it's a scalar. So B dot C multiplied by A, whether it is from the right or from the left, will give you a vector in the direction of A. While for this second one here, A dot B C, A dot B is a number, 
when you multiply it by c, you give it, you get a vector in the direction of c. So these are completely different vectors. The left one is a vector in the direction of a, the right one is a vector in the direction of c. While for the second equation shown here, these two are the same because a dot b is a scalar and it doesn't matter whether you multiply the scalar by the vector c from the left or from the right. So c multiplied by a dot b is exactly equivalent to a dot b multiplied by c. As an example of the, of the triple vector product, uh, we'll take a look here at this uh, problem. Um, we have a vector a which is equal to ax plus ay and a vector b which is minus ax plus 2ay and the vector c which is 2ax plus 3ey plus az. We want to verify the vector identity that a cross b cross c is equal to b a dot c minus c a dot b. And um, I, I, in, in the area of vector analysis, there are so many vector identities. Mathematicians spend long time in driving them. We don't have to worry about the derivation if someone wants to take a look at that. You can find it in advanced books and vector analysis. But this is an, an identity. It's called a vector identity. And we'd like to prove it through numbers. So what we'll do here in this example, we first calculate b cross c. It's a vector. And then once we calculate v, I'll call this vector here d. And once we calculate d, we, we calculate a cross d. And this will give us a vector. And then we calculate a dot c, which is a number. We'll calculate b dot a dot b, which is a number. And then we we'll multiply this, the first number by a. We we'll multiply the first number by c. And then we subtract them. And then we show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So here we could see, I, we first to form b cross c, we build a determinant where the first line are the coordinate directions. And the second and third line are the vectors. We put the vectors in, in every line as shown here. And then we expand this, this uh, determinant here. And you'll see it's equal to ax multiplied by 2 by 1 minus 0. Ay will be multiplied with a negative sign minus 1 by 1 minus 0. And az, the last one, will be multiplied by minus 3 minus 4. If you put all this together and you sum them, you get this expression here that b cross c is equal to 2ax plus ay minus 7az. Now that we have calculated the vector b cross c, we calculate a cross b cross c. So we, again, we uh, put the coordinates in the first line. This is here the vector a in the second line, and this is a vector d, which is, a cross, which is b cross c in the third line. And then we expand this determinant. This determinant will give you ax multiplied by minus 7 by 1. A will be multiplied by minus 7 minus 0. And the az will be multiplied by 1 minus 2. So if you put all this together, you get the answer in my, is minus 7ax plus 7ay minus az. Uh, we, so this now finishes the left-hand side. The right-hand side would require calculating the two-dot products shown here. They are pretty straightforward. A dot C, multiply the corresponding components and you sum them, you get 5. A dot B, you get 1 here. Now, we calculate the, the right-hand side, which is um, B multiplied by A dot C minus C multiplied by A dot B. So this is here A dot C, it's a scalar, it's 5. We multiply by the vector uh, B, this is a vector B here. And then the second one is A dot B, which is... Um, in this case, which is 1, so we have here minus 1, because there is a minus sign in the expression, multiplied by the vector uh, c, which is this one here. If you sum the corresponding components, you get minus 10, my, sorry, minus 5, minus 2, this will give you minus 7x. You get, um, in the y direction, you get 10, minus 3, so you get 7y, and for the z direction, you get minus az, and this proves that these two are identical.